Hey traders and welcome back to my channel. Friday has come around again already, another week down and what I want to talk about in this video today is how I am adapting my day trading strategy to cater for the summer holidays. Here in the UK this marks the end of week one of the summer holidays. Historically, this has affected the markets, not just Forex, where I tend to day trade, but also the other asset groups, stocks, indices, even crypto. We tend to see a sudden drop in volume. There is less momentum and less participation in the markets as people tend to take a little bit of time out to enjoy the summer holidays. This tends to be a lot of the larger institutions and banks, but how can this affect us as independent traders? Well, that's what I'm going to talk about in this video today. If you're new to my channel, welcome. My name is Emily and on Mindfully Trading, I share my journey as I grow and develop as a Forex trader. I've been trading for over five years now. I trade two accounts. I trade my live account with IC Markets and I also trade a prop trading account with the prop firm, the Five Percenters. If you're not sure what a prop firm is, I talk more about that in this video, which I will link to above. There's also a link in the description below and I'll talk a little bit more about the Five Percenters later in the video but for now all of the software I'm using is linked below please remember to like subscribe comment and let's get straight into the content hey guys so here I am in my platform on MetaTrader 5 this is the account that I trade with the five percenters and you can see that I've taken two trades this week I've basically mainly taken one winning trade this week, which is this first row here, taken on pound dollar, and I took this on Monday, and it was a pretty basic trade following my trading plan. If you've not got a trading plan, I've got a free giveaway. You can find a link to that in the description below. A trading plan is crucial for success as a trader. I also took another trade on the Tuesday, which was a little bit of a frustrating trade, and I think it's so much more easier to understand and see the trade setup on the charts. So let's just go straight to trading view. First things first, here I am on the daily time frame for pound dollar, and you can see that we have been in this overall uptrend on pound dollar. However, this week we seem to have just been having this little pullback. Volume has dwindled a little bit and it's been a rather choppy week. It can be more difficult to trade pullbacks and more often than not, especially for beginners, it can be a safer option to just sit out completely. However, for me as a day trader, I still look for those intraday trading opportunities that I managed to find this week. But there can be questions that arise when you experience a week such as this. For example, is this a pullback or are we seeing a long-term reversal? If price is pulling back, where is it likely to pull back to? All of these questions, it's good to have in your head before you decide to trade and try to solve those with analysis in advance so that you are prepared to look for certain reactions of the market and it can help to formulate your trading plan. What am I talking about? Well, this is how I tend to do my analysis. So from the daily time frame. I will look at market structure first. And we can see that we had this previous high here where price pulled back, it made a low and it broke that and made a new high. Very, very simple structure. And from this low of the pullback, I use my Fibonacci retracement tool. I place it at the high here and it gives me these three areas of optimum trade entry referring to the Fibonacci sequence. So that's 62%, 70% and 79% levels. I highlight those with a box just so that I can keep my charts nice and tidy. And that is a little area of interest that I have from the daily time frame. So for my analysis, I think if we're in this period of pullback, it's likely the price will pull back to this level. It will take out this previous little high here, little liquidity grab and maybe get a reaction. From there, I don't know. It depends how price reacts here. We might get a strong bounce and we might continue. We might get a range and then we might drop down. That is probably going to go into next week's video. But for now, at the start of the week, that was what my chart was looking like on the daily time frame. Once I established this, I dropped to a faster time frame. Then this is where I tend to formulate more of a structured trade plan to look into whether I'm going to look for a long or for a short. Now here is the 15 minute time frame. I've zoomed out so the candlesticks are very small just so that you can see the perspective in comparison with the daily time frame we were looking at before. There is the box that we drew. This is that overall uptrend here that we've been in. And you can see from these very obvious peaks, 
intraday where price has been making highs and lows we made a push up but then last week on the friday we broke this low here and we made a new low this is another pattern indication of a a short term reversal in this case because i'm looking at the 50 minute time frame which further adds to my plan that price is most likely going to spend this week trading down to this level and so with that in mind i started my analysis intraday on the Monday with a more short term, short biased approach to trading. So I was looking to sell, but I wasn't looking to hold it because overall we are up on the daily. I thought that this was just going to be a pullback. But once again, if I am looking for a short, where is a good place to sell? I don't want to just sell straight away. And this is where I carry out a little bit of pre-market analysis intraday. So this was Monday morning, looking on where I'd be interested in going short. And to do that, once again, I looked at structures. So from this high here at the top, price broke this low. And this was the obvious point where we got a break and close below this before we had a pullback. Because if we look at uh, this little swing here, all of these little pullbacks are all taking place before we get the break of this market structure level right here. And that's a key piece of information. So once we get a break below that, you can see that the candlesticks here come very strong. They are bigger. There's momentum. It's dropping down. We have a little pullback here and then we get another sell off down here. And it is this little pullback here that I'm interested in. It's a large candlestick. It was the high on the Friday trading session. And that's what I used to drop my Fibonacci retracement tool from and then dropped it at the low of this little swing. And intraday on the Monday morning as we started the trading day, it was just inside the previous Friday's trading day. We hadn't yet broken the low. And so I was most interested in a retrace to once again, these three areas of optimum trade entry. You can see that Friday morning during the Asian session, we did get a pullback to this level right here. And during the London session, we also got another pullback to this level. Now I had an alert in this Fibonacci retracement zone. So once price pulled back here, um, just come in late morning, I then loaded up my phone because I carried out this main analysis on my computer and then I trade from my phone around my boys. It's so much easier <laughs> to access the markets in that way. And I then just waited to see what price did because at the moment we broke this little intraday high but we had quite a large wick rejection. We didn't break above it with momentum. So it wasn't actually breaking this high. It was just testing it. But once we got this lovely bearish pin bar candlestick form here on 50 minutes at around about midday, even though the New York session hadn't started, this was when I decided to go short. And that's because I had my technical sell signal and it's because I also checked the news calendar on Forex Factory and there wasn't actually any news or events released scheduled for that Monday. So I knew that the chances of New York session bringing in a uh, volume in the other direction was slimmer because there was no news to give it a catalyst to move. And so I set a sell stop uh, just underneath this candlestick here. I used a 15 pip stop, which was above the intraday high and also just above this little consolidation here because I thought that'd be a nice place to protect my stop loss order. And to be honest, I initially set a 2R target uh, because I was aiming for a break of the overall lows. However, once I set the target, I thought about it again and I thought, well, my trading plan is to aim for a 1.5 hour target minimum. And once summer trading begins, as it has this week, I have to stick to my trading plan as tight as possible because from my experience, summer trading can be slower. It can take a long time for trades to play out. It can be more choppy, more unpredictable. And for me, that means that I've just got to be a little bit more conservative and just basically take those base hit wins when they present themselves. And so I set my target after this thought to 1.5 R. New York session opens and price dropped rather beautifully to my target. And I had those thoughts uh, with this, for example, I thought, oh, I could have doubled my position. Um, this is something I tend to do in ordinary trading 
situations. But once again, summer trading for me means a more conservative approach to trading where I am protecting my risk and capital even more so because in the past I have pushed it and there just hasn't been the volume and the momentum to see it through and I have lost. So I am focusing more on risk management and capital preservation for the next few weeks. And as you guys know from my broker, I did set another trade on Tuesday. Now I'm not going to go through it step by step in this way on the charts because I think this video is probably going on long enough. I don't want to take up too much of your precious time, but I will show you a screenshot because it is another brilliant example of how summer trading can really affect your trading performance and affect the markets. So here's the screenshot from the break even trade that I took. And it was the same principle. We got a break of that low um, from the previous day in the morning. And I used that together with intraday market structure to calculate my Fibonacci retracement. It broke the daily key level. All the points of my plan were ticked and it validated this short, which I placed during the New York session. But as you can see in the afternoon on the Tuesday, price consolidated for quite a while. And eventually we did get a little dip down in the evening. Now, I may have been a little bit too conservative, a bit too quick to protect my capital, but in the evening, on the Tuesday evening, I decided to set my stop loss to break even. Now this is largely because I am an intraday trader and also because it's summer. And so I just wanted to be really careful to protect my weekly profits, my gains that I'd already made. Now you can see here that price came up. It didn't actually tap my break even stop here, but this was at 10 o'clock at night, which is the crossover time. And at that time, the spreads go a little bit wild and unfortunately they stopped me out. So I did in fact get a break even trade. And it was frustrating because as you can see during the Asian session, it sold off beautifully. And in London, it would have hit that, that target, which was 2R. So a little bit quick to be conservative and it did cost me a beautiful win but it is the nature of trading. We cannot pick our winners and losers. We can only trade the best that we can trade. And for me, from my experience over the years, summer trading tends to be more challenging. So I am focusing on being happy with what I've got instead of getting too greedy. And for those of you who are wondering how I'm getting on with my account with Prop from the Five Percenters, I am enrolled in their instant funding, their hyper growth account. It is a program where you are given an account size. So my account size is $20,000 and I have a profit target here of $2,000. At the moment, I'm just under halfway to reaching that. It's taking me some time and that's because I am taking my time. I'm not over trading. I am super busy. I've got my my two boys full time who are two and a half and 10 months. So for me at the moment, just continuing to trade is a win enough and I'm not pushing it. If I had, you know, all my time free during the day, I probably would be able to take more intraday trades and reach that target a bit quicker, but I'm quite happy to take my time with this. The wonderful thing about this account with the 5% is, is that I can take my time. They don't have a time limit. There's no countdown timer on this account challenge. On any of their programs, they also have a high stakes and a bootcamp program, and obviously the hyper growth program that I'm enrolled into. And you can take as long as you want. As long as you remain active, you can see there are inactive days. So you've got to trade within the 30 day period for hyper growth, but there is no actual time period where you have to hit the target by, which for me is amazing. It makes this program so much more realistic. It takes the pressure and the stress away from trading, which is how it should be. So if you're a trader who struggles with lack of capital, if you want to make some money trading and you need an account to get started, um, if you have consistently been making money, if you have a strategy that works, then I recommend checking out the prop from the five percenters, have a look at their programs and see for yourself if it's right for you. Meanwhile, if you've enjoyed this video, please let me know by hitting that like button. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and I'll catch you in my next video. Thanks for watching. Bye.